Hello guys, how's it going? Sajin's Gamer Tag here again, and yet again, this is Dino D Day. And today we're going to be looking at the classes, give you a class guide. Um, I want to separate this into two sections, one for each team. Uh, we're going to start off with the allies, because they're my personal favorite. Um, I have bots here, but they're set on that Dynomon difficulty, and I'm not sure what it does, so we will find out for practice. Alright, so... um. As I said in the previous video, uh, the different classes, they're not just um, vague classes, they're their own characters, they have their own looks, their own personality, their own backstory. And so um, I'm just going to go down in order and give you guys uh, the backstory and demonstration of their loadouts and stuff, and just explain how every class works. And so, the first one here is Captain Jack Hardgrave, who is technically the main character of this. And uh, his description says, Paleontologist turned battle-hardened hunter, or no of Nazi dinosaurs. Hardgrave is a tough, well-rounded, assault-class soldier equipped with an M1 Garand, Colt 45 service pistol, and three pineapple grenades. And you can also go down here and click more info. And so you have this. It says, Hardgrave didn't ask for this war, but when it came calling, he answered. Shortly before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Hardgrave joined his friend and colleague, Nigel Blythe Crossley, knowing the U.S. would eventually be dragged into the war. He formed a commando unit with Nigel, see seeing action for the first time in North Africa. Special ability, after killing three enemies in a single life, Hardgrave can go berserk by pressing the special ability key, and the default for it is the E key, which I still have it set to. His blood goes up, his fists come out, and he's ready to punch dinosaurs and Nazis into oblivion. Uh, it's cut off here, but I assume it says damage is greatly increased in Berserk mode. I know that's true for a fact, but I'm assuming that's what it says. Alright, and so um, he does have an alternate weapon, but I'm just going to start him out with the default weapon here. So, here we go. Here's Hardgrave, here's his Garand can aim down sight as usual um, and uh, as is probably realistic with an M1 Garand uh, it has eight rounds and you can't reload until all those rounds are expelled so shoot three bullets I'm trying to reload and nothing happens so if I get rid of all of them he reloads automatically and that's what you have to do there it's got a Colt 45 pistol. Uh, Joe Spencer, at least, has the same pistol. It's uh, The pistols aren't too bad in this game, actually. They do a decent amount of damage. Um, and, of course, the three pineapple grenades and the fists that every allied member has. All right, so the bots obviously aren't in spawn. What are they doing? Okay, they're just running around. I'm doing a horrible job right now, I'm sorry. Just go up and punch him. <laughs> there. Alright, I'm going to try and show you the Berserk mode since they're not attacking me. It should be fairly easy to get that. <laughs> I'm just failing with the gun. Um, uh, I could take this time while I'm looking for another bot to explain that um, the alternate weapons kind of work like Team Fortress 2 in that uh, um, the beginning ones are just kind of default. They don't have any particular stats to them, but uh, the alternate weapons, they have stats with how much they change. <laughs> yes, and there are little insults when you kill someone. All right, we just need one more kill for that Berserk mode. But yeah, it's... um. Um, the alternate weapons show like uh, percentage differences and how they're different from the main guns and uh, Hardgrave's alternate here, the carbine, is um, it's a lot weaker um, but there's a ton more in a mag. There's like 20 in a mag instead of 8 um, but it's I think it's like 25% weaker is the amount I think that's right. We can investigate that in a bit and, uh, as I was trying to show you before, spawns that enemies can't enter. Um, kill the goat.
All right. Here's our three kills. Um, I want to find an enemy. Here we go. And so we're in berserk mode now. As you can see, one punch did the trick there. And your health is is increased by a lot. Uh, you hardly take damage from anything. Um, so yeah, your health and damage are greatly increased while you're in berserk mode, and you get that every three kills. Um, I believe it was buffed, um, the ability. I think it used to take like seven kills or something, and then they reduced it. Um, I think that's what happened. Alright. And so, this has been Jack Hardgrave. The grenades. Animation's a little, eh, for that. But, um... Also, as you can see before, this map is called Hilltop. This was the second map that came default with the game before they added anything. I thought I'd show it for this one. So you, so you don't just see the same map over and over again. Alright. So that was Jack Hardgrave. Now we're going down to one of my favorites, uh, real quick. Okay, yeah. So the stats for the M1 carbine, as I've been saying, 90% uh, clip capacity increased, and then minus 25% damage. Uh, if you want to see that real quick, you just have to select it. And now here's the carbine. I think the model of it looks pretty strange. Um, I don't think it looks as good as the Garand graphically. But uh, it's got 15 in a mag, actually, and you can reload it whenever you want. And so that's the only part of the loadout that you can change currently. I'm assuming at some point they're going to add more. Um, but yeah. All right, moving down to Joe Spencer here. He's one of my favorites. Uh, description, it says, A high school track star ready to battle Nazi dinosaurs for God and country. Spencer is an agile scout class soldier equipped with a Thompson SMG, Colt 45 service pistol, and three sticky bombs, a bomb that sticks, a sticky bomb. So we got the, the Thompson SMG, alternative fires iron sights, of course. Um, he also has the grease gun, which is plus 15% damage. Um, it says minus 20% accuracy, but I actually don't notice a difference with that, so I think that's something that they say and might be visual or something, but I honestly don't notice any difference in the accuracy when switching to the grease gun. And it says minus 20% rate of fire, but the greater damage compensates for that, so overall, the grease gun is a really good gun too. Um, I can use both of them pretty well. Uh, let's go to more info again, like I did for Hardgrave. It says, Joe joined Hargrave's squad hungry for action and adventure. He got them in spades. Joe's speed is his main asset, and his Thompson packs a good punch. Sticky bombs will stick to any surface, including players, and explode after a few seconds. They're excellent for taking out heavily armored dinosaurs. Joe can also call in artillery strikes by pressing and holding the special ability key, which is the default E again, as I showed you in the first video. A target reticle will appear. Press your primary attack button, default mouse 1, to bring in the heavy guns. Alright. And so here's Joe. You got a good look at him with uh, the last video. And so I don't know if I really need to <laughs> do him this time. Um, at the very least, I could have done the uh, grease gun instead. Oh, hello. And I'm going to be dominating bots because they can't do anything. They're just here for target practice to show things off. And as you can see, damage output for the Thompson's pretty good. Um, calling my artillery strike there. Um, it helps me to aim down the sights and do it, but you don't ha have to do that. Um, so all you really have to do is hold down, um, hold down the ability, uh, the special ability key, which is the default E, and I still have that, and you can just move it around with the mouse, and then um, just while you still have it up, you have to click down on uh, the firing button, which is default mouse 1, and it calls it in, then you can let them both go. And it'll just be coming right there. Yep. 
This guy's just right here. They should not be attacking me. What is going on? That's interesting. <laughs> okay, well, let's go back and heal. And then, uh, he doesn't have a berserk mode. Um, the, the berserk, they, a lot of the classes in this game have, like, sort of Call of Duty type kill streaks. And so, um, in some form, it's, a. Uh, for Hargrave, it was a Berserk, and for Joe, it's that Artillery Strike that just has a timer on it, really. Alright, uh, I'm going to show you guys the Grease Gun now, because you can get a good look at that. Uh, the only con for this gun, really, is the Iron Sights are really small. Uh, I have trouble using them. But, uh, it does shoot a little slower than the Thompson does. They reflect that in the stats. Um, it's a little tiny, uh little tiny gun it it has it does have more damage and fires a little slower it it, it compensates it's balanced the thing about this game is it's pretty well balanced um, not sure if anyone's gonna be in there but just go ahead and do an artillery strike the hardest part here is finding people Got the sprint meter. I should mention the sprint meter recharges faster when you're standing still or crouched. Someone should be. <laughs> All the bomb marks. Uh, where are they, team? They stop working after a while. I seriously have not used this bot mode before, and I just have no idea. I had no idea what to expect. Kill the goat. And we can't go in their spawn as usual. It doesn't look like anyone's in there. And it says, uh, when you get a goat kill, it says up in the kill feed there, you killed a defenseless goat. As in your name. It's like so and so killed a defenseless goat, as you can probably read. But, um,. Where are they? This is not very fulfilling. Okay, I'm trying to show you guys like damage output and stuff and the bots are not cooperating. Okay. Alright, well we're just gonna go down to the next person. Uh, Nigel Blythe Crossley here. Um, Says, British paleontologist and colleague of Jack Hargrave before the war, Nigel carries a trench gun as well as a Piet, an anti-tank weapon ideal for taking out heavily armored dinosaurs. And more info. Uh, it looks cut off. Determined that Hitler was preparing to unleash an army of dinosaurs and Churchill wanted to be prepared. Nigel was on the ground in France with a team of commandos before Paris fell, fought in the Battle of Dunkirk, where... Tarbosaurus were unleashed on the evacuation beaches and spent the blitz engaging in cross channel rage to raids, I'm sorry, to gather intelligence. It was during this time he reached out to his old friend Jack Hargrave. Together they formed a commando unit, seeing action for the first time in North Africa. Nigel carries a shotgun and Piet, an anti tank projectile weapon, by default. He can switch out the Piet for a flamethrower, courtesy of the US Army. And again it's cut off the Piet Okay, it says I'm I'm sure it says the flamethrower is good against uh, smaller enemies, but the Piet is needed against larger ones. And so um, he's got the trench gun, Piet rocket launcher, swap out for flamethrower. Uh, there's no different stats for that one because how do you, exactly do you compare a flamethrower to a Piet? But um, if you play TF2 a lot and you're a fan of the pyro, um, then this is the class for you. It's got the same loadout. <laughs> And um, you also have Smoke Grenade, which I don't find very useful. I don't use it very often. And uh, you have the Fists, of course. All right, well, let's just start with the Piet. And so, go in here. Here's the Trench Gun. Uh, you cannot aim down sights with the Trench Gun. They don't let you do that. So the alternate fire does nothing. And so, it's like that. Reload. 
And then here's the Piet. You can aim down sights with this, and it does have drop on it. Yeah, I see it didn't even get to where I aimed. Let's see. There we go. So yeah, it has significant drop on it, so you really need to uh, aim up where you want that to go if it's far enough. Um, I'll briefly demonstrate the smoke grenade. There it goes. It's <laughs> about to say. All right. Yeah, it's it's smoke. I mean, what else is there to show? But um. All right. Let's see if I, uh, the shotgun has some pretty good damage out, output against uh, human players. It's good for taking out smaller ones. Um, using the Piet, it's a good balance. This is good for uh, close quarters, taking out the smaller dinosaurs. This one's good for long range, taking out the the big dinosaurs. Uh, as you probably haven't even seen yet, there's a there's a dinosaur class called the Desmatosuchus, which is practically a tank dinosaur. Um, it's not as big as that might lead you to believe, but he does have a lot of health and higher cal caliber uh, guns like the Garand and Bar uh, will do it, uh, and uh, the Piet uh, does a does a good amount of damage against him too. I really need to find the bots. I don't know where they went. This is really annoying. I'm sure they're in that higher part somewhere, but they don't expect you to... Oh, hello. Alright. 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 So as you can see, that first shot took about half his health, so it's safe to say two shots with a uh, trench gun should do the trick. Oh, that took about three quarters, so... Uh, I, I still hold that two shots from the trench gun should do it. Um, with the smaller dinosaurs, if you could catch them, like the raptor, micro raptor, and uh, the compy, the tiny little one that you might have seen in uh, the last video, and I think he's in here too. Uh, if you can catch them when they're close enough, the shotgun should, it should one hit most of them, and uh, should make short work of them there. All right. So, I'll briefly demonstrate the flamethrower. We still have the trench gun as a primary, but here's the flamethrower. It's, uh, it's a lot like the TF2 pyro flamethrower. You just have 200 and it randomly goes away. You can't shoot it when you're right next to a wall, just like in Team Fortress 2. There's a compy. Burned him right up. As you can see, it's pretty good. Um, there used to be a glitch in this game back when they first released the T-Rex update. You can be a T-Rex in a few other ma maps. I'll demonstrate that later. But, um... I guess they shoot if I attack them. I think that's how this is working. But, um... There used to be a glitch in the game back when the T-Rex was first introduced. Because uh, the flamethrower was released at the same time. And, um... If... If you use the flamethrower against the T-Rex, then uh, it would like kill him nearly instantly. So it was obviously glitched. They fixed it. It's not that easy now. Uh, flamethrower practically does nothing to him, just like everything else. But um, all right, let's see. We. Can... Damn it! Killed him right after. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. Well, <laughs> since that's not working out. Okay. Um, these three first classes, Hardgrave, Joe, and Nigel, are the only ones that, can, that have swap out, um, that have uh, alternate loadouts. Everyone else has a set loadout, um, unfortunately. So, but uh, we're going to use Alona Vike next. She's the sniper. Uh, it says, Latvian partisan who watched Hitler's dinosaur army destroy her village. Alona is a skilled sniper that can take down the enemy at long range. More info. 
Ilona is a quiet one, nursing a burning hatred for the Nazis and their reptilian pets. The anguish she felt as her homeland was destroyed is never far from her mind. In the field, it's common knowledge that carnivorous dinosaurs quickly acquired a taste for mammal meat, and so Ilona always carries a dead jackrabbit with her. Any small carnivorous dinosaur can't resist them. If one strays too close to a, a jackrabbit carcass, its primal instincts will take over. As the dinosaur, as the dinosaur is feasting, it's a small matter for Alona or one of her teammates to take it out. And so, here's Alona. We got the sniper rifle here. It looks pretty good to me graphically. Um, also got a revolver, which is a unique secondary to her. No one else has one. Um, animation's a little glitchy on it. Uh, the reload is also kind of strange to me. But, um, you also have the fists, as usual, and here's the jackrabbit they described. Um, let's see if I can demonstrate this, because uh, this is especially good for taking out um, the velociraptors and microraptors, um, as I believe. See, so, yeah. it's it's a natural, it's a regular sniper. I mean, there's nothing special about it. It does usual damage output and stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see if I can demonstrate the jackrabbit here. You just throw them out. I only have one of them, so if it doesn't work right, then we're kind of screwed. Darn it. Oh, here's a, there's a Dismatosuchus up there. It's butt facing to us. Okay. Yep, he's going to start attacking. And you see it, he just shoots like artillery rounds. It's pretty crazy. Can I help you? Okay, got him. I'm sorry, I don't use this class very much, but uh, sniping is not the first thing I go to in a lot of games. All right, so the rabbit didn't work. Um, what it'll, yeah, and I don't have another one. I'll, I'll just describe what it does. What it does is, um. You throw it down, and pretty much as it described, uh, if a velociraptor or microraptor comes towards it, then there it's like a gravitational pull. If, say, like the rabbit is right here, and they're like right here, they'll just be like, oh my god, and they'll come right to it, and they'll just sit here for like five to ten seconds and eat it. And uh, that gives you, and there's nothing they can do about it. They just have to stay there and eat it until it's gone. And um, so that gives you or your teammates the opportunity to shoot it down while it's there and distracted. Ah, the sensitivity on the scope is kind of horrible. Get a, get a headshot. Oh my god. Best thing to do with a Dismatosuck is just get right up in its grill. So if it shoots, then it has to kill itself. But um, there you go. And uh, as you can see, uh, they have a lot more health than other classes. Uh, the sniper shots were doing a good amount to it. Uh, it's probably better to use the Garander bar that takes their health away a lot faster. You don't have to like uh, keep bolt keep bolting your sniper rifle and waiting for that. All right. Well, this has been Alone of Vike. Let's switch out again. I'm going back to the spawn every time so it doesn't kill me off. I hope that's not too annoying. Um, all right, now we're at another one of my favorites, Camille Brun. Uh, French partisan with a deep hatred for the Nazis, Camille was trained as a combat nurse in the French resistance. More info. If there's one thing that disgusts Camille more than a Nazi, it's a Nazi dinosaur. She carries five small first aid kits that can be thrown to teammates in the heat of battle. The med kit will will area heal anyone within range of it for 20 seconds. Alternatively, she can right-click on teammates. The med kit will be applied and her teammates' health will slowly restore. Players that need to be healed have a pulsing outline. The time it takes to heal a teammate depends on how injured they are. Press the use key to use the medic's special heal function. Nearby players will have a healing effect applied to them for a short period. All right. Um, that that uh, last healing effect... Um, was not part of the act of the original game. Uh, I believe the right clicking to heal individual people was, but um. All right, so here's Camille. She's got the Sten gun, as I said. Um, 
This is a pretty good gun. Uh, the damage output might not be quite up to par with the Thompson. Uh, definitely not with the bar. Uh, it might just be less accurate or something. But uh, you see, she's also got uh, this pistol. I believe it's a Luger or something. I could be wrong. Uh, fists again. And then here are med kits. As the description said, she's got five of them. They can be thrown out and then has a healing effect like that. It'll just appear like that, and then also if you're in it, uh, the little whole things will come out uh, bottom of your screen like they are now. Um, it should be noted uh, that the Axis also has a human medic. Um, their heal fields are red, like their team, like uh, the Allies' heal fields are blue. So you can e easily distinguish them. This guy just keeps going. All right. That could have been headshot damage, but <laughs> that was a pretty quick kill. I don't think it usually goes that quickly. But, um... Jimmy, okay. Well, we can rely on that guy continuing to come over there and just look out. But, um... And then... I can't exactly demonstrate it because no one's injured, but I can also right-click. All right. That was the pistol. That was four shots. That was pretty good. That was three, it looked like. So yeah, like I said, the pistols are actually pretty good in this game. You just have to be accurate. And, um... And so, I can't demonstrate it because none of my teammates are hurt, but you can right-click when you're by someone, and uh, you'll hear a little um, sound. And, um... Gotcha. Okay, she's using the buff thing, if you can see this. It sort of works like an uber charge from TF2. You just have to be in the vicinity for it to heal you. And um, I can use it too when hers goes out. Uh, that's what that meter on the side there. Okay, I'm going to use mine, and now it's working on her. And now it'll just heal everyone around you. So let's follow Tony Curtis here. Not sure what he's doing. <laughs> All right. All right, so that was the heal field. And then um, once that goes away... Come on. Oh, my God. He's so close to death. Uh, a lot of the problem with aiming down sight with a lot of these guns is they have the, um, the muzzle flash, and it makes it really hard to see what you're shooting at. And I think that should be corrected be honest. I don't know if it will. Punch the goat. It's very fulfilling to kill goats. I guess you have to be here to understand, but it's fun. Alright. So that has been Alona. I mean, I'm sorry, that's been Camille. Alright, uh, now we're going to go to my last favorite. Well, I guess Trigger's a favorite too, so I won't say last favorite, but another favorite. Uh, Jacob Franck here. Uh, as you saw in the last video, he's got the bar, flechette gun, he's got an MK2 frag grenade, uh, and his fists, of course. It says, uh, is that saying, okay, uh, German Jew drummed out of the Wehrmacht by the Nuremberg Laws, Jacob is a heavy hitter, tough to kill with high-powered weapons. And ain't that the truth? A lot of people say the bar's overpowered. Uh, Jacob, or Jake, as he's known to the English speakers on the team, takes a special delight in killing Nazi dinosaurs. To him, they're the embodiment of all that has gone wrong with his home country, an expression of the madness of Nazi Germany. The bar is devastating against enemy soldiers and smaller dinosaurs, and particularly effective against Dilophosaurus. But his flechette gun is the real secret weapon. Jacob fashioned the flechette gun himself. Each shot fires 20 razor-sharp needles that do devastating damage at close range. And so it's it's the that description for the flechette gun does seem kind of weird, but it, it's basically just a shotgun. So we got the bar here. Um, a little fact: uh, when you when you spawn in, um, you you don't start out with um, your ammo completely full. You can usually go to a resupply and get a uh, at least one more mag of ammo. That's what I did when I spawned. Um, the only kills they have are on me. I'm pretty sure. Yep. <laughs> but um you got the flechette gun here 
shoot it once and you gotta reload. The animation takes a while, so if you miss, you're kind of in trouble. Uh, and switch to the bar, though. Um, I didn't demonstrate the alternate firing mode before. I should do that. And so you got the two firing modes for the bar. That's the regular fire mode. There's 20 rounds in a mag either way. And then, um, for me, it's the middle mouse button, but uh, I believe it's F as a default. I'm not sure. Uh, you, you might want to change your controls in game when you start anyway. But, um... For me, it's the middle mouse button, and you can change the firing rate. And then it's kind of like using a Garand that you can reload. Has pretty high damage output. Four shots, and he was done. And so, that's that's a good thing to use, too, if you're just going to, like, camp out. See if we can flechette him. Not good. There we go. And just destroys him at close range. Destroys a lot of class. All the small dinosaurs just fear that so much. But you have to be accurate. It's it's a one-time shot, pretty much. If you if you miss that first shot, then you'll probably be dead before you can get off a second. Alright. And then he's just got a regular grenade. I never demonstrated the sticky grenades for Joe. I'm sorry about that. But now, for... I'm sure what everyone wants to see. An actual dinosaur class, since we've been playing Dino D-Day for a while now. <laughs> Alright. And so now we get to trigger the newest member of the Allies. It says, Trigger is a Protoceratops, a Ceratopsian dinosaur of the late Cretaceous found in Mongolia. Trigger packs a 30 caliber machine gun atop his back. More info. All right, and it's cut off again at the bottom, but I'll tell you as much as I can. The Allies may not have the same technology to resurrect dinosaurs, but they have the know-how to take a Nazi cast off and turn him into a first-rate weapon of war. Due to a birth defect, a malformed back leg, the Nazis rejected Trigger and left him for dead. He wandered the deserts of Tunisia until he was found by Joe Spencer hiding in a thicket outside Bizerte. He took the wounded, dehydrated animal back to camp and fitted a pro prosthetic on his sh shriveled back leg. I'm sorry. Feeling like he was missing something, they strapped a 30 caliber MG on his back for good measure. They gave him the name Trigger after Roy Rogers' famous horse. Trigger can knock enemies down by sprinting and... I guess that means doing. I guess that says doing uh, alternate fire to melee. Yep. And once down, he can finish them off by pressing Alt Fire again. Um, a friend showed me that this is actually really good. That trigger with his melee with his uh, melee charge can actually counter paint, uh, pouncing Velociraptors, which I will have to show you later in the Axis classes video. All right. So here's Trigger. Uh, I can't really get you a good look of him, but, uh, yeah, he's got the gun, he's got the ally symbol and on his side, and this is his regular movement speed. Um, there's an equivalent to him uh, on the Axis side that they added along with Trigger called the Stygie Malak, and uh, he moves a little faster, and he's bipedal instead of quadrupedal like Trigger is. Um, Trigger can also sprint, though. And he does his melee attack, which is uh, right click by default. Alright, melee kill him. Um, that was two hits for the melee, I think. And then he was down. Alright, um, as you can see, I have a shit ton of ammo for this gun. I never have to reload. Um, the downside, though, is that you have to be aware of that temperature. If you've ever played uh, like Star Wars Battlefront 2 or something like that, that's where I know this uh, mechanic from. Uh, a lot of the guns in there, they weren't ammo-based. They um, were heat-based, and they had a temperature thing that you had to watch, and if it overheated, then you couldn't fire for a while. It's pretty much the same mechanic in here. The Stygie Malak is the same way. Um, and so you just have to be aware of that. 
get up in his grill because I don't think they know how to freaking. He's probably this guy's probably gonna kill me. Ah, got you. All right, uh, get to the medic over here. You can call for a medic like in Team Fortress 2, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, with the bots, the bots won't come to you if you call for a medic. Thought you should know that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but Trigger's gun here. Um, I don't think it fires as quickly as the Stygi Malox one does, but I think it has a better damage output. So, um, again, there's balance. They did a decent job with balance in this game, I think, better than some other games. Cough. Primal Carnage. Cough. But, um... So, there's at least that. And, um... Uh, I could try the charge thing. Let's try... Uh, they also added a mechanic where you can pee. Uh, there's an achievement for it. If you knock them down, then pee on them and finish them off, I think. There's another trigger. See him prancing around. He looks really slow, but... Alright, let's see. Ah, uh, sprint meter has to recharge. Okay, it, it just regenerates so freaking slowly. Here we go. That charge knocks him down. And then... Oh, that was kind of like a stomp animation. That was cool. And so that's what happens with that. There's a compy here. This is the compy. I was ready to go. Damn, those things are fast. I don't know where he went. Oh, there he is. There we go. I freaking hate compies. Alright. <clears throat> Damn it. There we go. All right, and you have to do um, you have to be sprinting to do that knockdown charge, and then it's right click to melee by default. Um, I'm using because I'm using W A S and D to move. I have left shift as my sprint, um, and then I have the control below it to crouch. But dinosaur can't crouch. <clears throat> uh, well, some can. The Velociraptor can, but um, that's how you do it. And then. Uh, it's shift and right click again to do that stomp animation that I was doing. And that's that's pretty nice. I like that. Alright. Alright, so this has been all the allied classes. I gave you a demonstration of what they all can do, their loadouts and their backstories. And I'm sure there's something here for you. Alright, well, please like, subscribe, favorite, whatever you guys want to do. Just the views help, as usual. Just please give my videos a chance, at the very least. And this is Sajin's Gamertag signing out, and I hope to see you in Dino D-Day very soon. Peace.